Hello, good evening. Um, thank you for coming uh, to this film and uh, thank you for your interest in this very important issue and this um, amazing individual and uh, lawyer and activist. Uh, my name is Balkis Jara. Um, I work as part of the international justice team at Human Rights Watch based in New York where we're pressing for criminal accountability for the, the most serious crimes. So war crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity. Um, wow, that was a, a very uh, powerful film. Uh, ben Ferenz is, is well known to uh, international criminal lawyers. Um, uh, who are fighting to bring justice for victims of atrocities around the world. Um, his commitment to a more just world, to the rule of law, to the fight against impunity has been an inspiration to many people, including myself. Um, you can really say he's the embodiment of international justice. You know, recently we've seen um, many obstacles to bring criminal accountability to places like Syria, like Yemen, Burma, many of the situations that Ken mentioned uh, earlier. And part of our work at Human Rights Watch and my team specifically, together with other activists and partner organizations, is to try to extend the reach of justice despite those political obstacles. Um, what I can say is, though the road to accountability is a real rocky one, um, what's clear is that the expectations for justice have never been as pronounced as they are today. And the institutions and the norms that Ben Ferenz worked tirelessly to craft are, are not going to be easily undone. So we're very lucky today to have uh, the director of, of this film uh, Barry Averich. Uh, Barry Averich is a Canadian filmmaker. He's produced and directed uh, over 30 documentary films uh, and television productions, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So please uh, join me in welcoming Barry to, to the stage. So we're very happy to have you with us today, um, Barry, and to have this uh, really marvelous film and, and tribute um, to Ben. So thank you very much for that. Well, my pleasure. I'm thrilled to be back in Amsterdam. I, I love this city. When I told people in Toronto, I'm you know, coming to Amsterdam, they said, oh, it, you know, it's Toronto's sister city. And I said, uh, perhaps Amsterdam's less attractive sister, but uh, I'm thrilled to be here. I love Amsterdam. Okay, great. Well, I, maybe I can start us off with uh, a few questions and then we'll have a bit of time sure. to uh, turn it over to the audience in case uh, anyone has questions about, about the film. Yep. Um, so why did you decide to, to make this portrait of Ben? Uh, how, how did you come to find him, to, to know about him? I, I was watching 60 Minutes uh, on a Sunday night about a year and a half ago, and there was a story on Ben Ferenz, on, on, literally on a Sunday night, and completely fell in love with him in a 20-minute segment. And the next day I got to my office and I said to my team, find Ben Ferenz. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to be the ninth person in line that wants to make a film about him, but find him. And they found him. They got me his phone number, and I called him up, and I said, you know, Mr. Friends, you don't know who I am. Uh, I'm a documentary filmmaker. I've made a lot of films, and I want to make a film about your life. And he goes, all right, let's do it. And, and I said, what? Really? And he's, yes, when, let's go. When, do you want to, when, when can you get down here? Now, Ben assumed that this was another 15-minute interview, that this was going to be a quick thing. And, and I kept telling him, 
as we were, I mean, I, I spoke to him in June. In August, we were three trucks full of equipment rolling into his tiny little home uh, in Florida. And I kept telling him that this was, you know, a feature film. It's an extensive project. We're going to be filming for days with him. And, and you know, we showed up and, and, uh, and he said, well, I, you know, I got to let you know, I have an appointment in the afternoon. And, you know, so we, I said, Ben, we're, I'm, we're, we're scheduled to be here uh, 12 hours a day, you know, and he's the time 97, 98. And uh, I, I, and he said, no, 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 we'll get it done faster. I said, Ben, it's not, you know, a 20, it's, this is your entire life. You know, it's 98 years. Uh, I, 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 you know, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. We're going to get it done in one day. And I've never, you know, I've done close to 50 documentaries, in fact, and I have never, you know, spent that much time with somebody who had the energy that he did. I was drained with his life in six hours. We spent 12 hours shooting. And then I said to him, he said, you know, well, you see, I told you we'd get it done. I said, well, Ben, I have to come back and do the swimming. I mean, he swims 100 laps a day. And he said, let's do it now. And, and, and off we went, and he put on that Speedo, and into the pool we went with him, and he you know, swam another hour just before the sun, we lost the sun, but he, he is uh, spectacular. And again, in all of the films I've made, the, the, the most touching, worthwhile subject I've ever touched upon. I love him. What was his reaction to, to the film when you showed it to him? Well, I, you know, at that age, I so panicked because I saw it as a gift to him. I didn't know, you know, I financed the film myself. I don't, you know, which I never do. I, I took a huge risk because Ben uh, uh, is an unknown other, to, other than to human rights advocates. Uh, he is an unknown and it, it's, it's horrific uh, that he's an unknown primarily because the United States and their sense of show business and celebrity and politics would never honor him. So uh, I knew that I'd be making a film that I thought a very little audience would see. And to me, this was a gift to Ben. And I was panicked that I wouldn't finish the film before he ever saw it. So, you know, I, we filmed faster than ever. We shot Ben. And then I rushed to Nuremberg. And I rushed to The Hague. And I rushed to New York and to Washington like a madman. I'm whipping the editing team with a lot of footage to get this thing done in, in, in six months. Uh, and I flew to see Ben, I rented a movie theater around the corner from his house, I didn't want to watch it on his iPhone, which he would do. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so we rented a movie theater, we went in, big bowl of popcorn, and he watched the film, and, and I, it's, it's hard for me to tell the story, because it's so, it, 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 you never sit with it, most of the subjects of my films are in jail or dead, so I mean, so to, to sit with him in that theater, and he put his hand on my hand, and he wept, and he said, that's all I need. So, I mean, for me, that was it. I mean, we've since screened the film many times. It was at the Toronto Film Festival where it had its world premiere and, and, uh, and it opening in other cities around the world soon. But uh, it, it was just to watch. And he has seen it with me several times, and he cries every time. Uh, and it's, that's, that's, it's all he needs. It's all I need. I mean, wow. That, that's really amazing. Um, if there are any questions in the audience, I think we have time for at least a couple. As long as you want to stay. <laughs> I know it's late. Yes, I, I see a, a hand up on, the, on my right. I, just, I was wondering, I saw some, at some moments that he got emotional. Um, where did you, did you find, because he was himself a sort of a victim, um, did you feel that you were crossing some boundaries when you interviewed him? Because it's a very emotional work that he did. Um, I, I didn't feel that I was crossing boundaries with him. I knew that, you know, some of that footage he's never seen before. Uh, and and uh, I didn't expect, I expected him to be emotional looking back at his life. I didn't expect him to be as emotional in terms of recreating, or not recreating, but showing him going back into the camps and, and, and whatnot. I didn't expect that because he's, he's talked about it endlessly and he's seen a lot of this footage as we have, although there's some new stuff people have never seen. So I didn't expect that. However, switching gears for a moment, we showed the film in, uh, in Toronto and a, um, a Holocaust survivor sat, who was going to join our panel after joined me during the film. We sat together and he recognized his sister in the footage that he'd lost and never seen before. And it was like, oh, you know, that was quite something. 
Any other questions from from the audience? Otherwise, I I I have. Yeah. Four. Yes, there is <clears throat> there is some criticism on the International Criminal Court that they are focusing maybe too much on African warlords, not on other um, war criminals around the world. Yeah. Does Ben Ferenc still follow these discussions, and what is his opinion about it? He, you know, he is. You're, you're right. There, there's that criticism, and you know, and and, and I, and I, any time I screen the film, that question comes up on that end. But Ben is, and I'm not uh, sidestepping the question. Ben is the most encouraged human being you've ever met, and I think that's how he survives. And so when you bring up that, you know, aren't you, you know, somewhat dismayed that? Uh, uh, certain countries haven't signed, that they're focusing on this, that they tend to be myopic and, and whatnot. And, he's, and he simply says to me every time, give it time, give it time. It's still relatively new on that end of it. And there's no question. I mean, it, you know, there, there are criminal attorneys and journalists and, and experts who will say it's just, you know, it, it's never been what it should be on that end of it. But, you know, I'm not going to give you my own opinion, but Ben's opinion very much is, it will t look how long it took to get established. It will take time, and he's encouraged about everything. Even when I you bring up Trump, which if you were sitting here and everybody brings up, and he says, "Here's the beautiful thing: this too shall pass," you know, and and he has seen six presidents or more actually. I see. Um, I think we're going to have to wrap this, up this, after the. This poor girl here running up steps. Sorry, <laughs> you could yell. <laughs> One it out. question in the very end of the room. I think. I think so. Thank you very much indeed. Um, my question is, um, I really think the future of international justice um, is really in the hands of young people, particularly in the United States. I mean, to some extent, we skipped a few generations, and I, I wondered if you had shown this film particularly to uh, younger people, to those starting out in their legal careers, perhaps in their military careers, uh, and what reaction you had there, and, and if that might be uh, something to pursue. I, I have to tell you, we're, you know, my, the, the purpose with this film isn't about box office. I have no interest in trying to make back any money on this. It's, it's to have it's the widest release possible. So we've been showing it in schools uh, uh, where you know, I, I'm not preaching to the converted. Uh, and in fact, we showed it to, uh, funny story, to somewhat, we showed it to 2,000 uh, law students uh, last year in private screening and uh, I expected them to just not be in there for it but they were completely blown away. The, the funny thing about that was that while the film was running they were holding their iPhones up filming the movie and I, I said at the end I said do I have to teach law students that's piracy? <laughs> it's like it's insane. sheesh uh, on that end. Of it. But yes we're you know we're the, the plan for this film is a, is a huge educational rollout so people really understand and get a sense of you know, that what's really changed. I mean, you know, Ben really came out of Nuremberg expecting a different world, and it's gotten worse. Thanks for this movie. It was really inspiring. Thank you. Um, you mentioned earlier that you took the risk, a financial risk, to really go ahead and, on your own and produce such a movie. Um, my question is, like, how can we make such movies more popular, more... I mean, how can we make this a trend, very culture um, trend that we can produce such movies every now and then, not just to keep it for Human Rights Watch Festival to be shown at or at a university. We need the, the whole world. We need to learn also about, you know, stories of other heroes like as Ben uh, be seen and, and recognized. Uh, what does here, it take here, to... Here's what I'd say to you. I, this, this is not going to be a tree that falls in the forest. This, this film has played, you know, 30 film festivals already. Netflix has bought it in the U.S. We're going market by market on that end of it. And, and I won't rest until the world knows who Ben Ferenz is. Uh, I, I would say to any other filmmaker, then take the same risks I did. Uh, make it on your iPhone. I couldn't care less. Whatever. Just get it done on that end. The great news is that the appetite for documentaries, this isn't a documentary film festival, but the appetite for documentaries is enormous, enormous. You're looking at the ratio in film festivals and even on you know, uh, Amazon and you know, other streamers that are looking at enormous. So I think, I think we're getting there. And again, for this particular film, I'll make sure that this is seen as, as everywhere, everywhere. I'm open if they're going to ask. Okay, well, are there any, okay.
Um, tough, tough any, crowd. any other questions? I think we'll we'll take one more. No. Nope. Ch change their mind. Okay. Well, maybe I can ask you what for you you were hoping audiences really take away from this film well i you know to me i it, it's it feels uncomfortable walking into a theater and receiving any applause for this film i could have pointed a camera at ben and left and and you know and he he's that powerful you know the applause is is to him uh and towards him and and so for me the audience, what I want the audience to take away is to, you know, spread the message of Ben, ultimately. Uh, I think there's, you know, I think there's also a huge geriatric message, too. And maybe that's because I'm the son of, a, of, a, of an aging mother that concerns me on, on that end of it, of how this man lives his life. I will call my mother and say, Mom, I was just with Ben, and he swam 100 laps, and he's great, and he's wrote, and he read six newspapers today, and she goes, good for him. And it's like, and then, you know, it's like, well, no, 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 I want, you know, it's, it's that glass half full thing. So, I mean, he, he is just so inspiring in that he doesn't give up and become the angry man. He just sort of keeps moving. And let me tell you something, he's tough. We're, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, planning a, a feature film about his life now, and so we're in deep discussions about that. And, and, uh, and I will say quickly, because I know you want to go, that, you know, when, when I did show the film to him, two fast things, because they're fun, is that uh, he, um, you know, he cried and he, and he put his hand in my hand and then we were driving home back to his, his house and he says, you know, in the third scene where the da 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 da, -da you might want to dissolve here and move into this, it's like suddenly he's a filmmaker, which I, which I loved. But the other thing was about him is that Ben had this, this situation where he, when he was going back and forth between Nuremberg and Berlin, he was in a plane with his wife uh, who was living there, they were having a family, and the plane engine went, and then the second engine went. And they were going down, they were gonna crash, and so they put on parachutes, and Ben jumped, and his wife jumped, and they, he couldn't find his wife for three weeks, uh, and didn't know where she was, and, and it was frightening, it was the most incredible story, and he tells me the story as we're driving back to his house after watching this film, he goes, why didn't you put that in the movie? And I said, you never told me that story. <laughs> And that's the problem with being with Ben is there's, you know, another 30 stories which could have gone in the film, but in, in the hours of filming, he never talked to me about, it, including a million other things he's accomplished. Well, thank you very much, Pleasure. Barry, for, for being with thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you enjoyed this film, we really encourage you to uh, take a look at the rest of the program for the weekend. There are a lot of amazing films and um, programs still to see. Um, and for, for those of you who have been invited to some drinks, it's just across, uh, across the way here on the uh, left, or my, my right, your left. All right, thank you very much again for coming. <laughs>